Hey everyone, Ed here with Davis Pickleball. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I customize my paddle. This is a brand new Lab 6 that I'm gonna to customize to my specifications. This is the one I've customized myself. I use a Hesacore grip, which is a unique grip that you actually take off the stock grip off of your new paddle, and then you put onto this, this sleeve here, and it's got this unique hexagon pattern to it. And I don't know the physics or how it works, but my hands feel so good on this, where if I just put my hand onto my paddle here, each of my fingers line up perfectly to each groove. I'll put a close-up video so you can see closer, but it feels, from my grip at least, which is a continental grip, it feels really, really ergonomic. So when I play, I don't need a lot of uh, tackiness on my paddle grip anymore because my fingers fit the grooves a lot better. So I'm gonna share with you my grip that I use, how I put on over grip. I also put on an edge guard on my paddle. The edge guard I've weighed is about 0.1 ounces. I'll double check it again. Um, so it does add a slight amount of weight onto the top of your paddle, which adds a little bit more swing weight for sure, but not enough where you feel uh, slow in hands battle. So it kind of serves two purposes for me. One is to add just a tiny, tiny touch of weight for more power. Um, but to, to also protect the paddle. I do have some tungsten tape here. I haven't really seen a need to put tungsten tape on my Selkirk Lab 6, just because the paddles, it comes usually between 8.4 to 8.6 ounces, which is already quite heavy. So I haven't really found a need to put on more weight onto the, um, I usually like the throat of the paddle. I might experiment with it. If anything, I might put a touch on the, on the throat but the sweet spot of the six is so good already. I don't really feel like I need to put on more weight. And lastly, I have my carbon fiber paddle cleaner here. I just cleaned my paddle this morning, so it's nice. feeling pretty gritty. Um, of course, I have my new one here, which I don't need to clean it right now. So let's get started. Here we go. So first thing you're gonna wanna do with your paddle, it feels wrong no! and just barbaric, but you're actually gonna want to take off the overgrip. So uh, I, I hate this part because Selkirk has really nice overgrip and it looks really uh, expensive and they did it so nicely. But we're gonna be barbarians here. We're gonna take it off because I am going to put on my custom overgrip with a Hesse grip. Okay, so here we go. What kind of place to hit the so if you have never seen the handle of a Lab 6 yet, this is what it looks like without the overgrip. A lot of paddles look very similar to this. Um, although lower end paddles, you will actually see exposed polymer core on the handle. But Selkirk, because it is thermoformed, they sealed it all up and it's one unibody paddle. It will not snap. It will never snap. So this is what it looks like here. So we're gonna wanna take your Hesse core grip. I have a few different ones here. So they do come in different sizes and different colors. This is a medium size or a small size. I am going to use a small size, which is this one here. So let's go ahead and open this up. This is what it looks like right out of the box here. We got a grip here. It's a kind of a rubber mold and you can already see the hexagon pattern to it. And it comes with these little plastic tabs. These are what's gonna help you to slide it onto your handle. So here we go. I like to put it between my legs here and it's gonna wanna go fat side on the bottom of the paddle and then the thinner side near the middle of the paddle. So you're gonna take these tabs, you're gonna slide them in here just to reduce the friction because it is pretty uh, grippy as it should be for an overgrip. And then you just wanna go ahead and pull that apart and slide that in. There we go. Cool. So once you got like this first part down, it's just gonna take a little bit of wiggling to slide it all the way through down here. So uh, just be patient with it. Use the uh, plastic molds, the little plastic tabs to your advantage and kind of help slide it down. Oh, wow, it's kind of a workout. <laughs> yeah. Slide it down. 
should have used the plastic tabs to help reduce the friction. Okay, so yeah, I definitely think that was a lot easier to slide it through using the plastic tabs. After you kind of get the majority of the grip onto your handle, just make sure you got it lined up so that the logo is facing the middle here and that I would recommend like just holding it in your hand, make sure that your fingers fit the contours quite well. Mine, as you can probably see, doesn't quite line up straight. So I'm just gonna wiggle it a little bit with the help of the plastic strips in there just to help me get the right uh, angle on each of those little hexagons there. So let's shift it a little bit here. Looking pretty good. So I'm just going to hold it in my hand. Yeah, it should feel quite snug into your hand, both sides. Both sides should feel like, yeah, that's my grip right there. And I would actually recommend these grips to beginners as well because beginners who are having a hard time finding the grip, especially if you're trying to learn continental grip, sometimes it's hard to know how to hold the paddle and which side to hold it on. I see a lot of beginners hold it like too much this way or they hold it too much this way. So these grooves could actually help not only feel more ergonomic, but actually could help you feel like you have a consistent position with each of your uh, grips. Also, Pesacor says that these grips do absorb shock a little bit better than traditional uh, stock grip. And I could definitely see that because this is rubber and this, as you, I can feel it, it's like quite plush feeling, especially if I put another overgrip, which I will. I could definitely see how that could absorb more vibration and shock than traditional stock grips. So now that we got this on, I'm going to take off these little plastic tabs. Shwing, shwang, boy. So perfect. So I have this Hesacore grip on. So now I'm gonna take my overgrip and put it over this uh, Hesacore grip. I use uh, Gamma overgrips. For me, I just bought them in bulk on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. I buy them in packs of 40 so that they're not too expensive per grip since I do go uh, through quite a few of them. And if you want to learn more in depth on how I overgrip and my technique of applying overgrip, um, I have a YouTube video which I will put somewhere up here. Okay, let's go ahead and apply this here. Okay, so I got my overgrip on top of the Hesacore grip now, and you can see that. There is still that pattern that you see, that hexagon pattern here. And if I wanted to go for my continental grip, boom, my hands perfectly fit. Each finger fits right in its correct position on that groove there. Fits really nice in my hand, both ways. Feels really good and ergonomic. I could swing and I feel like I could really throw around this paddle here without feeling like it might slip not only because of the tackiness of my new overgrip, but also because of each little finger groove that I have. My thumb goes on this groove right here, my index finger goes on this groove, and all my other fingers fall right into place. Feels really, really good. So here's my ready position. Boom, forehand. Boom, backhand. Nice. So this is my Hesicore grip setup. What I'm gonna do real quick here is I am going to weigh this paddle um, because I just want to make sure that even with my grip and my Hesacore grip, my paddle is going to be the similar weight of my other paddles that I practice a lot with. So here we go. This one comes out to be 8.89 after the Hesacore grip and the overgrip. So let's compare my other paddle here. This one comes out to be 8.85. So very, very close to me. That's going to be uh, just about my setup that I like. My last thing that I'm gonna be doing with my paddle here is adding a protective edge guard. And I'll weigh this bad boy here. That is going to be 0.1 ounces. So after all this, my final weight should be close to 8.9 ounces. I do have the paper here that I still need to take off. Apply my edge guard here. I did make a short Instagram version of how I apply my edge guard, um, but I'll show you today. So I like to use Selkirk's edge guard. I like to line up their logo right here 
with my other Selkirk logo up here. So let me show you how that looks. Line that up with this up right there. So I go top down, middle first, and I make sure to try to get it nice and even. And don't overthink this. I used to like really overthink it and do it over a bunch of times, but as long as you got that logo generally in the right place, it's just gonna fall into place. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how it looks, okay? As you can see, I didn't really have to overthink it. And then I'm just gonna gently press and brush. Press and brush, swish and flick. And then I go slowly down the edges of the paddle. And really what I'm doing here is just trying to get rid of all those little air pockets. It is such a good feeling to get brand new over grip and edge guard on a brand new paddle. Oh, it's so gritty. I cannot wait to use this out there. So final weight comes out to 9.03 compared to my other one, 8.82. So this one is about 0.2 ounces heavier. I think this uh, stock, I should have weighed this paddle before, but the stock paddle that I came originally with, I think it was at 8.56, uh, weighed a few days ago. Um, so final weight of this is about nine ounces, which is generally where I want. So that is how you set up your paddle to Ed's specification. We got our overgrip, Hesacore, paddle protected, and we are ready to go play. So thanks for watching this. If uh, you found it useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll put all the links that you'll need uh, to do this to your paddle down below in the description, and I'll see you on the courts. Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out.